Hello and welcome to the special end of year episode of Diplomata. I'm Francis Suni. As one of the world's youngest nations, Timor-Leste, since its first days of independence, has been striving to be part of the international community. Throughout the past decade, it has successfully secured memberships as well as participation in a number of international organizations and forums. Today, it focuses its efforts on joining the Association of Southeast Asian Nations known as ASEAN. And to help us understand what Timor-Leste has done to be able to be part of this prestigious organization, I will be speaking to the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation, Mr. Dionisio Babo Suarez. Minister, thank you very much for giving your time to join the program. To begin, would you please share with us your history, your work before the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation? Prior to independence, um, I was uh, a student uh, in various universities um, in Indonesia, in New Zealand, and Australia. I completed my degree um, with the Australian National University when, when I finished my uh, PhD in uh, anthropology and so sociology. I was um, initially um, at university law degree uh, and studying constitutional law, but also participated um, in a number of um, uh, parts of the resistance movement um, as a young student uh, in my own way. Uh, participated in various uh, international organizations, including uh, the last meeting of CNRT back in 1998 in Lisbon. That was the time when uh, uh, Timorese were not allowed to travel to Portugal because the, port the Indonesian passports were banned. But we managed to, to go um, and participate in the meeting where I had a chance to meet the resistance leaders like Zé Ramos Horta, Maria Alcatiri, um, Zé Luis Guterres, and among others. And I came back to Lille in 1999 uh, to do my PhD uh, field research and completed my uh, degree in 2003. From 2004 uh, onwards, I became involved with an international organization as deputy country director uh, in Delhi and worked for um, a couple of years before I was called to uh, join uh, the Commission of Truth and Friendship between Timor-Leste and Indonesia uh, by uh, the then president, Mr. Kaira Alassanana Guzmão, and uh, ended up becoming the co-chairman of that organization. So we successfully uh, completed the work in 2008, and from 2008 onwards, I began to work um, as an advisor to the office of the vice prime minister, José Luis Guterres, for a couple of years. Uh, but then I was also um, elected and together with uh, Mr. Shanana Guzmán uh, established uh, the a new political party with, which uh, then came to uh, preside a coalition of governments for two consecutive periods between 2007 and 2012. And also in 2012 onwards, um, uh, I became a member of the government as the Minister of Justice. And in 2015, uh, when uh, there was um, a reshuffle of the cabinet, um, I was appointed as the Coordinating Minister for uh, uh, Justice and uh, Public Administration Affairs, and also as the Minister of State Administration. Uh, then uh, after um, 2012, I was also elected as a member of the parliament and worked uh, for um, eight months uh, during which a minority government uh, led by uh, Fredly in the opposition uh, was at the office. But then when uh, fresh elections took place in 2017, where the coalition came back to power, I was appointed as the Minister of Foreign Affairs. So I had two different portfolios before coming uh, uh, or being appointed as the Minister of Foreign Affairs of, of Timor-Leste. Of course, this long journey um, has been uh, giving me lots of experiences and lots of uh, um, ideas on how um, to run you know, an entity that belongs to the government 
and to support uh, the program that's been outlined by the government, the prime minister, and also you know the political parties, which um, of course uh, are integral part of of, of uh, the whole portfolio for the next uh, five years. Uh, so far, we've been able to complete uh, the first phase in the first year uh, with uh, all sort of uh, different uh, uh, all the, uh, all um, different political priorities that have been. Um, outlined and uh, I think I'm pretty I'm very much um, uh, convinced that uh, I think they got this government despite of uh, uh, its uh, shortage of uh, members uh, because uh, many of them have not been sworn in by the president can um, do and contribute something good for the country Timor Leste in the last few years have gone has gone through ups and downs in its internal politics has that somehow affected or influenced our diplomacy in an international in the international world as i have said that whatever uh, determines foreign policy is national interest but um, national interest is not uh, necessarily the diplomatic um, uh, sorry it's not necessarily uh, the democratic uh, di the dem democratic dynamics that uh, is happening uh, inside the country when I refer to democratic um, uh, dynamics I refer to you know all the political ups and downs and that happens internally uh, all the ups and downs within um, the relationship between our our um, sovereign bodies, our institutions. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, thanks to the efforts of the last 15 years, or the first 15 years, where uh, Timor-Leste was able to pose itself uh, on a separate and uh, different track of uh, its development, uh, which have actually served as, serve, serve as the foundation of um, what the country is and what the country wants. Uh, and, and this, uh, of course, um, has contributed a lot to how, how foreign diplomacy works. For example, uh, if you want to look back uh, since 2007, since 2008 uh, and onwards, at least until 2016, Timor-Leste has enjoyed um, a vibrant economic development with a growth of uh, around two digits per annum. And that has boosted uh, Timor-Leste's um, profile internationally. And it was almost actually uh, graduated from the um, rank of the least developed countries to become an upper middle income country. In fact, we have uh, a national uh, strategic policy in terms of development where uh, we aim to become an upper middle income country in 2030. Uh, but by um, economic standards, we have been able to actually complete some of the criteria set up by the international um, organiz multilateral organizations, including the UN. And I think uh, many of them thought that Timor Leste could have been graduated from the list of least developed countries. But then we've asked them to postpone it and say uh, and wait until a few years because we want to test our economy and see if the economy really um, is sustainable and, and, and could um, really um, move Timor-Leste from a least, least of least developed countries to an upper middle income country. So, you know, uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, that also shows our, um, uh, you know, uh, foreign uh, policy uh, image. So our foreign policy, our, our image as, as a country uh, that uh, only uh, you know, came to be uh, in, in, in less than 20 years. However, uh, as you might also note that uh, from 2017 onwards, we've been experiencing uh, I, what I would call um, uh, an unprecedented democratic um, exercise uh, where um, we had a change of two governments uh, and three governments uh, at, in less than two years. Uh, two governments, and then we had two elections in, in less than two years. We have uh, experienced uh, a government, um, you know, 
administered by a minority, uh, which lasted only for eight months. And then we had to go to another uh, uh, fresh election. Uh, and of course, this gave a lot of um, um, new um, ingredients into how politics have been developed. And the fact that even until now, uh, our president is still um, refusing to uh, swear in about uh, almost half of the members of the government uh, that has won a major, um, major um, majority, uh, an absolute majority, or a majority uh, in the in the last election, uh, and and the way that you know the government is now functioning only with half of the members of the government that's supposed to be um, have been supposed to be nominated. I mean, um, has of course, in a way, also given impact um, to our um, political image uh, outside the country. But certainly, it is not um, impacting on our uh, foreign um, policy at all. Because I think uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, under which I um, am the supervisor at the moment, uh, has um, tried hard to organize and uh, separate between what, what internal politics is all about and what. Um, a foreign policy is all about. So, despite um, in uh, a couple, number of international multilateral organizations at the state level, uh, our um, head of states and head of government uh, have been absent at all. But um, I think the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has been able to um, carry out the job uh, successfully, representing the government at all these levels, and um, showing that you know Timor Leste as a country continues to um, function uh, as an uh, you know as a, as a state uh, and uh, there is no reason to uh, say that uh, the state is not functioning and also the country has matured itself it becomes so mature now and I um, can tell with almost proudness and confidence that um, we, we, we will make it a great nation in the future you come from the party with Nine, member, nine proposed members of government that have not been sworn in by the President of the Republic. Has that somehow influenced you on a personal level and also um, your, with your work? Well, um, in a way it is. It is because um, and this is a party that presided by, it's a government that presided by, by, by the political party where I stand for. Uh, the National Congress for Reconstruction of Timor Leste, CNRT, uh, but um, on, of which um, you know nine of its members have been uh, refused to become members uh, of the government, um, and it looks to um, as if I um, a minority am a minority in the government. It is, it is, uh, but we tried very hard. Uh, because the commitment of the political party in the coalition remains intact and unchanged. Uh, so our contribution um, at the, um, the, the political level uh, has to be maximal. I, I um, um, hope that you know, um, in the next uh, few months uh, there will be any change in the mind um, of, um, of the president uh, and also uh, a wish for um, a communication to take place between all these political um, uh, entities uh, and, and find a way that could um, safeguard uh, the current government because it will, of course, benefit not only uh, the, the country but also the population as a whole, particularly um, you know, in delivering uh, the promised um, uh, programs that actually have been uh, th that you know were, were voiced out during the the political campaign. So, um, um, but at the personal level, I, I I'm also trying to actually work very hard. Uh, I think uh, with with uh, the current government, the prime minister is uh, is a personality that uh, is is good to deal with, good to work with. My, work with my my friends in the in the government, despite um, uh, are from different political parties uh, in the coalition, but I think we, we are coordinating quite well. Um, uh, but, you know, it, it's, it's a matter of take and give. Uh, wherever you are, you'll have to make sure that you can um, adjust yourself, um, you know, um, because the, 
the main objective is not the government itself, but it's the well-being of the people, the well-being of the country. Politics and diplomacy have kept you ext extremely busy. How do you manage the family life, the family part of your life? Well, I think it happens to any uh, po other politicians as well, all members of government as well. But being a uh, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs um, has uh, uh, quite a complete, a different um, um, life. Um, I um, have to spend uh, so many hours in the office and also so many weeks uh, outside the country trying to lobby and become part of different uh, international organizations uh, and meeting uh, various um, uh, foreign dignitaries, trying to lobby for the interests of Timor-Leste and also uh, you know, making sure that Timor-Leste's um, uh, visibility um, before the world is um, tangible. And uh, for that, um, uh, you know, I've been working together with my directors. Uh, uh, a lot of them are very are senior ones, have, have been in the foreign ministry for a long time. Uh, but then I also have to, um, uh, you know, uh, explain to my kids, uh, who are still uh, very uh, young, uh, also my wife, uh, telling them that this is the job that I have to do and they have to understand. I spend uh, very little time with them, but I also try very hard to uh, make the most of any uh, minutes left uh, of my day to, uh, you know, have um, a fatherly um, approach and fatherly um, um, intimacy uh, with all of them, be with my kids, uh, their mother, uh, and also uh, make sure that they don't feel that I'm lost, um, uh, you know, from their uh, rather uh, on a daily basis. So uh, I, I, I managed um, uh, and tried very hard in such a way to make sure that uh, you know the family um, is um, not feeling um, any loss whenever. Um, I'm here uh, or whenever I'm outside the country. So even outside the country, I uh, continue to communicate with them regularly just to make sure that uh, they are in touch with me uh, and also um, feel that they are very close to me as um, on an everyday basis. Thank you very much. It's well, been a very nice conversation. Thank you. We have learned about Minister Dionysius' history and background in this session of interview. In the next part of the program, our conversation will be focusing particularly on Timor-Leste's efforts to join ASEAN. Thank you very much for staying. You're still with me on Diplomata. And joining me in this special episode is Timor-Leste's Minister of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation, Mr. Dionysio Babo Suarez. Minister, to put our conversation in the right context, perhaps we could begin by discussing Timor-Leste's own international politics, its foreign policy, particularly in relation to ASEAN. Well, uh, since uh, 1974, when uh, Timor-Leste's young and future leaders began to dream of independence, and a future Timor-Leste independence. Uh, the dream also involves the idea of having Timor-Leste as part of the original bloc. And ASEAN was at the site of uh, our then leaders. And the idea has become embroiled in the whole process of independence. Uh, particularly during the struggle towards attaining the objective of becoming a member of this organization. So um, this idea was reiterated back in uh, 1997 during the Peniche Conference in Portugal. And it was then also came up when Timor-Leste's political factions 
met up uh, before the independence uh, of the referendum vote in 1999 that an, a free and independent Timor-Leste would eventually uh, join the organization of Southeast Asian nations. Uh, that um, is part of the whole dream and process which became materialized uh, in 1999 and in 2002 it was put forward as a foreign policy priority uh, of Timor-Leste, um, particularly in the region. And Timor-Leste in the recent years has been pushing for, for joining, um, joining ASEAN. So where is Timor-Leste at the moment in terms of joining? Well, the idea, um, as I have referred to um, previously, uh, was formally launched in 2011 when uh, the then Foreign Minister, Mr. Zacharias da Costa, uh, launched an application uh, to the ASEAN Secretariat uh, formalizing this idea of Timor-Leste's willingness to become a member of the organization. And in the following years, uh, around eight years, the idea of becoming a member of ASEAN uh, has been the foreign policy priority of Timor-Leste. Of all the countries, the 10 countries that are currently members of this organization, the majority of them have accepted and agreed that Timor-Leste is a member of the region or a country in the region and therefore it has all uh, the right to become a member of this organization. Uh, as we all know, um, ASEAN, of course, is an organization that began uh, simply as a regional organization. It was then uh, developed and other elements such as economic, politics, politics, defense, uh, cultural, and um, all other related elements actually became entangled uh, with the whole idea of ASEAN as an organization. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, as time developed, ASEAN has proved itself to be one of the most um, uh, strong Organization, strongest organization in the world, uh, uh, one of the strongest regional organizations in the world, uh, and an organization that um, has proven through uh, times and different level of political developments to uh, stand st steady, stand strong, uh, and remain um, uh, adherent to the ideas which backed uh, the organization. Uh, as such, of course, um, ASEAN would um, require that any new member uh, of the region should be able to comply with all these, not only interests, but values, as well as principles, and also the advancement that ASEAN, ASEAN has achieved as an organization uh, in the last uh, couple of years. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, the organization uh, is now, as a block, it remains one of the strongest um, economies in the world, uh, apart from the mighty of the United States, China, and Japan. Uh, and as ASEAN has a dream of becoming an economic powerhouse in the next 50 years, of course, it's now struggling, and members, the member states are now struggling very hard to uh, shift that uh, objective. And uh, therefore, it's not, um, you know, it's not a strange thing for them to also demand that Timor Leste to become member to, to to become a member will have to comply with various 
uh, you know, criteria that uh, the organization uh, would require. And for that reason, uh, in the last two years, since the eighth constitutional government came to office, uh, the foreign ministry, uh, under the guidance of the prime minister, has started uh, a campaign of uh, uh, convincing um, other countries' members that uh, Timor-Leste is a country that uh, is part of the region and has fulfilled all the required criteria to become a member of the organization. And most of all, Timor-Leste would be able to comply with all requirements that ASEAN requires. And uh, Timor-Leste will become uh, a contributor, an active contributor, and not a burden to the organization, as some of the member states may uh, have thought about. A few months ago, you had a tour, uh, the ASEAN tour. What was the result, the, the main result of that, of that tour? Well, uh, as I said before, the f eighth constitutional government uh, has a commitment uh, that this idea should be resolved once and for all. Um, for that reason, under the guidance of the Prime Minister, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs took the initiative to tour all ASEAN member countries. Uh, as I said, in the eighth constitutional government, the idea of becoming a member of ASEAN remains one of the top national foreign policy priorities. So the idea was to pay official visit and also to ask for um, the com commitments uh, of uh, each single member of ASEAN, whether there is a space for Timor-Leste to become member of the family or the organization. You know, from all these 10 countries that I thought, uh, none, no any single country have shown um, objection to Timor-Leste's application to become a member. In fact, the majority of it wants Timor-Leste to be, become a member because naturally and geographically Timor-Leste is a member of the region or part of the region. There is one country that uh, still have some reservations, uh, which is understandable. Uh, and for also on the basis of that, um, under the presidency of uh, Thailand uh, in 2018-2019, uh, the organization took the initiative to <coughs> uh, discuss and set up the criteria for Timor-Leste to uh, join the organization. And for that, uh, they decided that three uh, elements uh, would have to be assessed to see if Timor-Leste fulfills the criteria that all uh, members would um, require and also to, to, to comply with uh, you know, the standard requirements and values that I mentioned before. Um, so they, the first pillar was um, the, that was chosen was the, the, the political sector, the political defense and security. The second pillar to be assessed is the economic pillar. And the third one is the social cultural pillar. In between the 4th and the 6th of September, uh, 2019, uh, the SOM leaders of ASEAN, which is the top bureaucrats, second only to ministers uh, of all 10 countries, uh, uh, came with a delegation of around 60 people uh, to conduct assessment of two, uh, two three days in Timor-Leste. Uh, and they all have um, been uh, receiving information uh, related to this element of political defense and security from various uh, ministries and government entities uh, in the country. Um, it is expected that uh, a follow-up team that would assess either economic or socio-cultural elements 
uh, will come to Timor-Leste in the near future. And as soon as all these three pillars have been assessed, uh, they uh, would, may uh, be you know, able to come up with uh, a pronouncement of um, you know, whether Timor-Leste is viable to join the organization. And if it is so, when it is uh, viable, when it's um, the right time for Timor-Leste to be part of the organization. So, um, uh, and Timor-Leste, of course, through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and other uh, relevant ministries have been working very hard. We're working on the critical elements that ASEAN has required us to fulfill. Uh, but the three main criteria that actually remain visible to be fulfilled is, one is to be a member of the organization, the country has to be a, a member of the region. Second, um, you know, the country has to for, be able to uh, live up with you know, um, the requirements that the organization uh, you know, um, advocates, uh, particularly um, in terms of um, you know, being able to contribute financially um, and also to um, uh, be recognized by each single member of the organization. And for that, Timor-Leste uh, has already um, established uh, 10 embassies in all ASEAN member countries. And the third remaining um, element, uh, criteria, is that whether Timor-Leste is able to organize uh, worldly um, summits of ASEAN and also ASEAN's partners, uh, including uh, uh, you know, the United States, uh, Japan, and also other um, Asian Regional Forum member countries such as um, China, um, Great Britain, Canada, and, and, and others um, in, in Timor-Leste. And I think uh, you know, Timor-Leste, um, I can say, has fulfilled almost all the criteria becoming a presidency of the CPLP for two years between 2014 and 16, and the ability to organize international events, including summits of the CPLP, is just an example of uh, whether Timor-Leste can be part of ASEAN, able to fulfill the, those criteria or not. And also the fact that now Timor-Leste is also pioneering the establishment of the small G7+, Plus, an organization that uh, accommodates about 20 um, member countries, particularly those of affected, conflict-affected countries, um, and has its secretariat in Delhi. Um, it's just, um, it shows that Timor-Leste is able to, and more than able, to organize uh, any event pertaining to ASEAN, including uh, receiving uh, the foreign high-level dignitaries in the country. Which country has been the, uh, the strongest support, supporter of Timor-Leste becoming a nation, well, member, as I nation said, of ASEAN? All member countries uh, have no objection. And there are, of course, some very strong advocates within ASEAN. And I would say like 99% of, of the ASEAN member countries uh, are very supportive. Uh, and in fact, you can say a hundred. Uh, it's just that uh, uh, some countries would um, not pronounce or not show, or would refrain from, show, from showing their uh, uh, acceptance uh, before uh, the evaluation of the three pillars that I mentioned previously, um, you know, uh, have hatched anything uh, concrete. What would be the advantages for Timor-Leste when uh, it joins ASEAN? Well, I mean, when you're talking about advantages, you're talking about two-way advantages. It's not only one-sided advantage. Uh, for Timor-Leste, of course, uh, you know, as, member, as a part of the region, Timor-Leste remains the only country that is not a member of, the, of ASEAN. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, ASEAN uh, has around 630 million people. It's a huge market in terms of economic uh, economy. Uh, the third point is that it is a market of around 
3.4 trillion dollars. And you can imagine uh, how much money is being circulated in the ASEAN community. Of course, there are lots of advantages. In terms of um, geopolitical strategy, you know, almost all ASEAN countries are, um, in one way or another, uh, subscribing to the Indo-Pacific system. Uh, so in terms of geopolitics, uh, within the context of the ARF, uh, or the Asia Regional Forum, which has a member of uh, member around 28 countries, including the United States, uh, Russia, China, Great Britain, um, Canada, uh, Australia, and others. Um, uh, of course, um, uh, offers a lot of advantages in terms of um, uh, cooperation uh, in military terms and also in maritime, uh, in, in uh, regional security, both um, you know, um, uh, land security and also maritime security. Uh, and, and together, of course, we can even work together to combat issues such as um, transborder uh, trans crimes and national transborder crimes, including um, illegal fishing, uh, you know, the illegal um, transportation of drugs, of, um, uh, of human um, trafficking, uh, and also um, other illicit forms of um, uh, crimes, uh, which is, of course, um, has a huge advantage for Tim for Timor Leste. How yet yeah, uh, Timor Leste, you know, by becoming a member of ASEAN, of course, will complete. On the one side, will complete, uh, you know, uh, the region uh, that all members are part of the organization. And secondly, you know, it offers ASEAN uh, an untapped market uh, that we, we is not. Um, uh, is not small. You know, Timor Leste is endowed with uh, abundance of national resource, uh, natural resources. Uh, at, apart from the Bayou Undan and all the block, <coughs> natural oil and gas that we have are now being uh, open for investments. I mean, we would be glad to also see uh, companies from uh, our uh, fellow ASEAN countries to join. In addition to that, Timor Leste is planning to begin um, exploring the Greater Sunrise oil field onshore, uh, which uh, has uh, an estimated uh, value of around $50 billion um, in terms of cost um, estimacy of the current uh, oil price, $40 uh, per barrel. <coughs> Uh, but also in the long, uh, it, it is it is a um, uh, oil field that uh, is expected to have a life of 50 uh, years, uh, and of course during that 50 years, there will be lots of economic activities, and this I think coincides well with ASEAN's 50-year vision of becoming an economic powerhouse in the world. So <coughs> Timor Leste will contribute uh, also to that. But in addition to that, Timor Leste also uh, is, um, you know, a gateway to the Pacific. Uh, of course, you know, um, that will offer also um, a huge market for ASEAN in, in economic terms. And also, as a member of the Portuguese-speaking countries, Portuguese-language-speaking countries, uh, Timor Leste is also a gateway to the, you know, these uh, Portuguese-language-speaking countries in Africa and Latin America, as well as in Europe. So, so, uh, uh, so uh, you know, there are a lot of advantages Timor Leste can offer. And uh, in addition to that, uh, there are um, various um, developments, initiatives, particularly the foreign investments uh, in the area of um, uh, cement and also uh, asphalt and manganese, <coughs> even um, you know fisheries, uh, since you know the strait that goes between Atauru and Dili uh, is uh, has been dubbed as a, a Pacific um, fish highway, 
uh, which uh, of course uh, sees uh, or in a breeding area or breeding place of uh, the tunas that actually migrates um, on a yearly basis around the world. So we have a lot to offer um, in addition to the vast Timor Sea um, area which uh, you know has a lot of untouched um, fishery um, and, and, and of course many others um, economic um, you know um, uh, opportunities which I think uh, you know will be of advantage to ASEAN not to count issues like agriculture uh, um, development in the areas of agriculture tourism um, and also um, other um, areas of uh, productive areas that could offer uh, Timor-Leste but also uh, the ASEAN as a whole with um, some economic gains. There is also a concern that by joining ASEAN it might pose threats as well. Uh, given that Timor-Leste is having issues with uh, human resources, skills and opportunities, um, the concern is that the Timorese might miss out on a lot of opportunities given to the fact that Timor-Leste uh, is having problems with skills, for instance. Is that a realistic concern? I, I would say that this is not a realistic concern. Uh, you know, these um, are the ideas of pessimists, people who, um, uh, you know, um, lack the long vision um, of um, what a country, um, you know, aspires to and a, a country can be. Uh, uh, those are the people who actually think that um, the world ends um, with themselves. Uh, I would say that um, when touring um, all the ASEAN countries, I've heard uh, a lot, lots of different stories. When uh, 50 years ago, when ASEAN decided to establish itself as an organization, uh, only one or two countries uh, that uh, the people were able to speak or communicate in English. Others did not have that opportunity yet, but they slowly uh, become engaged and slowly uh, adju become adaptive. And today, you know, ASEAN's language, formal language is English. Um, some other countries in also ASEAN which, which, which joined later were not uh, economically in an advantaged position. Even uh, today, you can still see uh, the remnants uh, of uh, those pessimistic uh, period in some of these countries. But they, uh, you know, have shown a strong resilience uh, and commitment to continue develop, develop and to become uh, a member, a mem full member of the organization. And when I, um, I think, it's, you know, talking to some of my fellow ministers of foreign affairs of this. ASEAN countries, they say that, uh, you know, development comes with engagement. Development comes with uh, participation. Uh, and uh, it's a learning process, but also it is something that you can do while learning. Uh, you cannot, there is no um, uh, a white and black uh, theory on the table where you can pick one of them and use them. No, there are lots of approaches. Uh, when you say that whether you're going to be advantages, advantages or not when joining your organization. I, I um, can tell with, uh, uh, with um, uh, you know, a lot of confidence that uh, Timor-Leste um, is in a position to become a member. We have enough human resources, not to count the natural resources that I, I mentioned already. We have natural, 10 years ago, I can still accept this idea. But today, with lots of um, Timorese graduates from some of the best universities in the world, working in Timor-Leste, able to communicate fluently in English, 
in Portuguese has been having the experiences of, of, of becoming, uh, of, of participating in various international organizations, in various events at the world level, uh, has actually given uh, a lot of experience to the Timorese. And also the fact that Timor Leste were able to assume the presidency of the Portuguese uh, language speaking countries, uh, which is a member of um, around 90 you know, uh, countries in different, part of, different parts of the world, were able to organize the summit of head of states, receiving them here, hosting them, and also other uh, related organizations, just gives a glimpse of what Timor-Leste is today. So um, uh, I would say that uh, Timor-Leste will not, uh, you know, be, uh, you know, left with nothing by joining the organization. In fact, you know, with um, an open market like ASEAN, and while residing uh, into um, the values and principles such as consensus and non-interference in the state affairs of other member countries by, by any other uh, member, uh, of course, uh, will certainly provide uh, a lot of autonomy within each member countries to decide and to, to take steps that it deems necessary it, to um, protect itself, to improve itself, and also to design policies and legislations that could um, you know, bring uh, all the goodies um, to the country itself. Economically and financially, what would be the consequences for Timor uh, by joining ASEAN? As I said before, uh, ASEAN is a region of 630 million people, an economy of $3.4 trillion. Uh, by joining ASEAN will certainly uh, be advantage, advantageous to Timor-Leste, economically. Uh, Timor-Leste will have to gain a lot by trading with these countries. By becoming a member, it will incentivate the Timorese to become more active. The private sector to engage more, uh, to uh, you know, um, make laps, not only in, in the, inside the country, but also to trade with other countries. Because there, are, there will be legislations and you know, compliance that you know, the country, the people that are inside will have to comply with. And of course that um, is certainly, um, you know, everyone will feel protected. Uh, in addition to that, but on the other side, I would say, as I said before, you know, there's an untapped market, you know, a market of $50 billion for the next 50 years, not to count other investments that have been taking place, uh, such as cement team or asphalt team or, uh, and the manganese and other natural resources that are yet to be tapped uh, in, in the country. So, the, I mean, um, let me just, um, uh, you know, cite some uh, information that I received while visiting ASEAN. Uh, having discussion with uh, various people uh, who are very supportive of Timor Leste's, in, you know, becoming a member of ASEAN, uh, saying that, uh, you know, by uh, becoming a member of the organization, uh, ASEAN has already set a standard uh, for itself that uh, is um, equivalent to any other um, world standards. First of all, in terms of legislation, in the custom, in the mining codes, and uh, legislation in terms of protections, uh, in terms of um, uh, coordination in the in, uh, uh, defense and security, uh, in terms of geopolitics, Timor Leste is also uh, will become a member of the arc uh, of, of, of this region, which of course um, uh, offers offers lots um, of um, uh, you know protection and also um, 
opportunities uh, for uh, the Timorese to engage. Uh, and that, of course, in itself will serve as an as incentive as we go, we go along that many, many Timorese um, will feel that you know, they are called into becoming part of the players. Uh, and also, uh, you know, it will um, certainly also attract you know, people to come and work in Timor-Leste. Uh, and that is in, in, in itself is already um, an, advantage, uh, an advantage. You know, uh, that will bring um, uh, lots of economic um, uh, advantages and also economic um, uh, benefits that many people won't see. Uh, so um, I am optimistic. I'm very optimistic as um, many of our leaders have, asked, have dreamed of becoming a member of the organization back in 1975. And I am determined to make it happen. Timor-Leste obviously adopts the free market approach. What, would, what trade agreements would we have to um, agree to if, we, uh, if Timor-Leste joins ASEAN? Well, at the moment, Timor-Leste has not been accepted to any uh, regional economic um, block. Uh, but it is, um, you know, uh, the, the area itself is, uh, uh, you know, an open market. Uh, it is an area of free and open trade area. Uh, as member of states have been declared, uh, and there are a number of um, uh, conferences and meetings that uh, take place annually around the country, and looking into different productivity uh, sectors of the economy. Uh, that uh, some of some of which Timor Leste have also um, participated, including the private sector. And in those um, conferences, meetings, and so on, including Timorese own um, um, information sharing through, um, you know, um, economic forums that we um, we, we um, so, um, coordinate uh, and also hold held in Singapore, and there will be uh, some coming up in other ASEAN member countries. Um, will certainly, um, of course. Um, uh, you know, uh, putting Timor-Leste uh, in whatever region or block it may be. Uh, but ASEAN is an open and free market. Of course, there is no any restrictions or limitations. It is open. Uh, it's an open market indeed, as I said before. But uh, I think what is needed more here is to comply with um, all the, uh, you know, requirements, but in terms of legislation, in terms of uh, um, uh, acceding to um, uh, the uh, you know open market uh, uh, requirement, uh, we, which of course will 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 um, you know show that Timor Leste um, you know is an area worth of investing, an area worth of uh, putting money to develop. So I I I am um, uh, I'm very um, uh, conscious of um, you know all the restrictions that. Uh, it might have, but I'm also open uh, uh, since, you know, in my trip to all the, some of the ASEAN member countries uh, who are not yet developed, but have enjoyed the economic uh, relations with uh, not only the ASEAN, but also with other countries that are not, are not member of ASEAN. And that has given them uh, lots of uh, opportunities to develop and also um, advance in terms of um, uh, their economy and also their income per capita. Timor-Leste has been doing quite a lot of work in upgrading the skills of uh, its people, especially the young ones. What are the activities, um, specifically in preparation to join ASEAN, what are the activities the Timor-Leste government is doing to, to prepare and help upgrade the skills of the Timorese? Uh, there um, is a national program that um, is called Timor-Leste ASEAN Mobilization Program. And the Timor-Leste ASEAN Mobilization Program, or TLAMP, um, has concentrated in looking into many of the critical elements that uh, some studies in the past 
have conducted in Timor-Leste and require Timor-Leste to uh, work on uh, to be able to become a full member of ASEAN. Uh, that includes economic, the economy, uh, legislations, uh, legislations um, uh, that actually meet the standards of um, ASEAN, which um, of course, uh, you know, world standard uh, piece of legislations, and to, to ratify all the documents and international directives that has to do with um, uh, development in the economy and others. Um, uh, so long as ASEAN has also ratified them, uh, and in addition to that, um, uh, other areas of development that. Uh, is also part of the critical elements that Timor-Leste should work on. And for that reason, the Timor-Leste ASEAN Mobilization Program has um, uh, organized in such a way that all ministries uh, in the government are also part of this mobilization program. And all are looking into each of these single critical elements, addressing them, be it in the economy, in, the, in politics, in the cultural um, sites, and also areas of um, productive um, sectors that will contribute directly to uh, the uplifting uh, the, uh, Timor-Leste's economy and also the well-being of its people uh, and also to be able to meet, uh, which can meet the criteria uh, of, um, uh, of, of ASEAN. So um, I, I would say that uh, uh, in terms of uh, the government efforts, uh, I think um, what the Timor-Leste ASEAN Mobilization Program uh, is doing is simply to respond to what has been asked and recommended, but program-wise, at the country uh, level, of course, um, uh, the government uh, national development plan, which shows um, or lays the stages in which Timor-Leste wants to achieve in the next um, 20 years uh, to make Timor-Leste, to, to transform Timor-Leste from a lower middle income country into an upper middle income country, uh, I think is in itself a, a fulfillment of the requirements that ASEAN uh, wishes and uh, ASEAN wants. And, and that also shows that, you know, that the country is working very hard to develop itself, but development itself also reflects uh, the requirements that ASEAN um, would require for a member country to, um, you know, uh, to make. My conversation with Minister Denizu on the topic of ASEAN and Timor-Leste's efforts to joining it resumes this episode of the program. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the program. I will see you on the next episode of Diplomata. I'm Francis Suni. Bye for now.